What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with the Mariners post game recap, and it it's ended. The Mariners season is officially come to an end. Well, fish that season ends tomorrow, but the Mariners have been eliminated from postseason contention. Uh, they dropped tonight to the Rangers six to one, and with Houston's win over Arizona one to nothing, uh, the Mariners are officially eliminated. And their season will end tomorrow afternoon. Uh, before I get started, I just want to thank all of you um, for your support, for liking the video, subscribing. Um, I did a post game recap for every game minus two in Oakland when I had the stomach flu. Um, but other than that, we we got every game in, and there will be one tomorrow as well. And you guys have made it so rewarding for me um, to be able to do this, to do these videos, to do these streams. As I have a dog hair or something on my shoulder there, whatever. Um, so thank all of you for the subs, the likes. And if you guys could do it for me one more time or two more times tomorrow as well, hit that like button and hit subscribe for me. Um, so thank thank you to all of you uh, for your support this season. And I truly appreciate it. Kind of a microcosm of the season today for the Mariners. Um, you know, some poor play, a little bad luck, a little bit of everything just nipped at them today. And unfortunately, the way they played in September, you know, they just, it, it, it was never, they just never got going this month. As soon as that calendar rolled over, they just couldn't figure it out. And again, like I always say, in a, in a vacuum, is this series the problem? No, they've won two out of three from Texas so far. That's pretty good. The problem is they put themselves in a position where they had to sweep the Rangers and it's just not happening. You know what I mean? It's just not something that's um, that's going to happen. So it, it's a tough, tall order, and there's just been too many losses this month, just piled on and on. And it's a shame because it didn't have to be, you know, like I said in every video, it's one thing if, you know, another team rattled off like a 23-win month and the Mariners won 19 games and just couldn't keep up with them. But that wasn't the case. The Mariners are what, 12 and 18 or something this month? That some, I don't know, 12 and 17, 11 and 17. I don't know. Two more wins. Two more wins. That game in Cincinnati, the, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the energy to harp on all of them, uh, but we'll get into the game today here. Start with the pitching. Luis Castillo was bad. And boy, oh boy, Luis Castillo had two starts for the Mariners with their season on the line. Monday, I think it was Monday against Houston, and then today, and poor performances in both of them. Two starts that if he goes out there and pitches like he's capable of, pitches like the ace this team has paid him to be, they might be going to the playoffs. And, and not, again, this is not all on one person for this team not getting in. Luis Castillo had has had a really, really good season. He has. But the last two starts are, were, were just not good. We're not good. Today, the command was terrible. Some of the hits that fell in against him were little dinky Babbitt hits that, that happen. But if you don't walk five guys in two and two thirds, those little bloopers aren't going to hurt you as much. You can only get so many bloop hits. Eventually, you'll get an out. But if you put guys on and keep putting them on via free passes, those bloopers are going to get you. And that's what happened to Castillo. And just the command, not there. And no ability today to put anybody away with two strikes, so many foul balls against Castillo that he could just not, um, couldn't put guys away and then too many walks for every reason, nibbling. Um, you know, Brian Wu kind of nibbled last night a bunch, but I thought it was fine. Wu's had a lot of trouble with this lineup. It's a good Texas lineup. Texas deserves credit. Like part of it is they spit on some, you know, to Texas's credit, they spit on a lot of close pitches and drew those walks. They deserve credit for that. Um, but with Wu yesterday, I thought it made a little more sense for him to nibble. I don't know if it was Castillo's game plan to nibble. I don't know if he just didn't have that command, whatever it was. But five walks and two and two thirds is not going to get it done. And then the Rangers were able to put the ball in play and, and score some runs. So Castillo, really, really unfortunate. His last two starts, um, the poor performance from him, it's just not good enough. Um, it, I'm not going on some huge Castillo rant. He's fine. He's going to be back next year. I'm excited for it. He's a really good pitcher. But just like I said, kind of a microcosm of the Mariners season where last year they kind of got those clutch performances from guys in these games, winning the extra inning games, just stuff they did not get this year. Um, I thought the bullpen was fine. Brash was not quite as sharp as he's been. 
Um, I thought Gabe Spire and Edward Bizzardo threw the ball really well. Um, Sosedo did his job. Munoz and Topa, you know, whatever. They got the job. Well, Munoz gave up a run, but at that point, it was pretty much over. And, and offensively, uh, again, just as Castillo not good enough today, the offense was not good enough today. Um, you should be winning Luis Castillo against Andrew Haney. Now, as I always say, baseball is weird. Uh, you know, the 2010 Mariners went into Yankee Stadium and won a series. Things happen, not comparing the Yankee, the, the Rangers to the 2010 Mariners, but I'm just saying things happen. Um, but you should be winning Luis Castillo against Andrew Haney. You should not be getting shut out by Andrew Haney through four and a third. Um, Haney's been in the bullpen the last month. He's not terrible. I mean, he's a capable major league pitcher, but you've got to find a way to get some runs against him. They had a chance in the bottom of the fifth. They loaded up the bases with one out, down five, nothing. A, a base knock, something gets it to five to two. Julio and Gino come up and Julio pops up, gets ahead one and oh, swings at ball two. Take that pitch. You're two and oh in the count there, putting a little pressure on the pitcher. Uh, but I, for whatever reason, Julio and some of these situations, especially in the last couple of weeks, he has just struggled um, in those spots. And then he had a terrible strikeout uh, in the eighth inning as well, where he just swung at a pitch, not even close. And then Gino grounded out to end that bases loaded situation. Gino does hit a home run in the eighth. Would have been great if that home run would have happened in the fifth. Um, but it is what it is. And, you know, talk about Castillo, the performance not being good enough, not getting those clutch hits. Julio's performance, certainly the last two weeks, just not good enough. He was, Julio came up in a lot of situations where he could have won the Mariners some games. And he just, I, I'm not, I, I am not going to make personal attack. Like, I, I, I don't know if Julio, I don't get into, oh, these guys aren't clutch, whatever. I, I'm not a big believer that guys are just inherently more clutch than others. I think Julio is going to be just fine. I think most hitters throughout their career, their batting average with runners in scoring position is going to be pretty similar to their career batting average. Good hitters hit, bad hitters don't. I think Julio is a great player. I think he is going to have a tremendous career. And I think in three years, we're going to look back and laugh that he struggled with runners. And there are some of these at bats that we saw in September. But for whatever reason this year, I don't know if it was just him pressing to, to, to get that big hit. I don't know what it was, but man, he has had last, especially last few days, few weeks, just some really, really rough at bats in, in those tough situations. So again, just like I said with Castillo, that's not putting this all on Julio either. It was a collective effort the, the Mariners not getting in and their kind of September collapse. If you want to call it that guys, there, there's blame to go around everywhere. Ownership deserves blame. The front office deserves blame. Scott deserves blame. And the players deserve blame. The players are not absolved of this. I see a lot of people wanting to put it all on something else. The, the players deserve it too. Listen, for, for everything, like they went into today's game with their best pitcher on the mound against Texas throwing kind of a bullpen day with their season on the line, and, and they blew it. That That is not on like Scott and, and Jerry necessarily in that instance. Like now, uh, you know, if you want to say maybe the team wasn't ready to play, whatever, like, I'm not saying that they're absolved, but like in this instance of this game, it was there for them. It, it was definitely there for them to get it done. Um, but again, this series isn't really the problem. They've won two out of three so far against a really good Rangers team. It's all the other stuff. It's getting swept last week in Texas. This, And I'm not talking about winning the series. Find a way to win one of those games. It's getting swept against the Dodgers. Not finding a way to win one of those games. Those three brutal losses to Tampa to finish out that series it's finding a way not to it's not winning one of those games you know just so many instances we can go back to April and May this team played flirting around 500 for a long long time um and they did get it going I I and applaud that they, they made this interesting and I'm certainly uh enjoy the fact that it's been at least the last three years, this team's been in contention. It's been more fun than, let's say, 2005, 2006, 2008, some of those years where the team was just dreadful. Um, but it makes the heartbreak a little worse. It makes it uh, a, a little bit worse. And then, you know, I just, yeah, it stinks. It stinks. Um, and, and I said last year that, and I know I've probably said this a bunch, and listen, I, I do daily recaps, so I'm going to have broken record moments. It's hard not to repeat the same stuff sometimes, but, um, you know, I said last year, if they lost to Houston, that 
Last year was fun. It was a ton of fun. It was amazing to see them back in the playoffs. And I was okay with how the season ended. It's, it stung how it ended last year, but they had a great year and it was a great ride. But the key was next year, now the expectations get a little bit higher. Now it's not just good enough to get in. Listen, we went 21 years without playoffs. Getting in last year was good enough. But this year it was not. It was not enough to just get in and um, lose. And they didn't even get in. So it, it's not good enough. It's it's not acceptable. I don't think this team, and I'm going to get into off-season videos. Um, I'm going to wait for the season to end. And the next week I will have kind of talk about the state of the Mariners, I guess, a little bit. But um, they've they've got to address some things. I don't think this team needs a teardown. I've seen some people say that. I think that's ridiculous. I think the core is good enough. But this can be a tough division. Houston, I don't think, is going away. Texas has proceeded quicker than we expected. The Angels are going to be pretty bad, and I, I think Oakland will as well. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's not going to be easy. And the AL is going to be tough. You know what I mean? The AL is loaded. You got to figure the Yankees aren't just going to sit back over there either and take missing the playoffs. So. It is not going to be easy, and he had a chance to get in this year and couldn't do it. So I, I, I feel like I, I don't have much to add. I'm I'm kind of sad, and I don't know if that's more just the journey of my channel this year and hanging out with you guys, and now the season's coming to an end. And it's just, it's emotional. All the games we sat through, that great run in August when it looked like this team was a lock, and then the, the September fall to just to just not get in was, was tough. It, it was really tough. So uh, listen, you know, Today was just kind of microcosm of all of it. Um, and, and, you know, frustrating that they couldn't get a little help from Arizona, but it's not Arizona's responsibility to get the Mariners into the playoffs. The Mariners have nobody to blame but themselves. Nobody to blame. They had chances. They played all the teams they needed to play. Um, they had, we talked about the 10 games, the three, and what what's their record in those 10 games of Texas, Houston, and Texas again, 0-3, 1-5, 3-6. Yeah, I mean that was not going to get it done. We talked about that, and, and we we were right. We said seven and three guarantee it. Six and four probably doesn't. It would have. It, it would have just a lot of opportunities missed. Team's going to have some stuff to address in the off season. So I I, I will have a video up next week. Right now I'm emotional and I don't want to make an off season video the minute after they're eliminated. I, I just don't think that's smart analysis. So I'm going to wait till uh, season's officially over. Join me tomorrow. I will be live for the season finale. Um, you know, a stress-free season finale. We'll hang out. We'll have a good time. It'll be kind of a fan appreciation. The teams do fan appreciation. This is subscriber and viewer appreciation uh, for me. So we'll hang out, have a good time. So come over tomorrow for the live stream. And uh, a lot of Seahawks content coming forward on this video, on this video, on this uh, channel. So get ready for that. Um, the Mariner season does come to an end. If I don't respond or I uh, get to a lot of comments, I, I'm I'm heading out for the night, guys. I'm just that this team has wore me down, and I honestly like even doing this video was tough. I just I, I don't I don't have anything else left to talk about with this team. You know, th there's that small small part of me, God, and I feel like for, forgive me guys for saying this, but almost a relief just because of how bad they've been playing in September. I don't know if I could have dealt with another day of them just hanging on by a thread. I wanted them to get in. 100% wanted this team to get in. Like, I'm not saying that I didn't want that, but man, they made it hard these last few weeks to really, really get the energy going. So join me tomorrow for the play-by-play. -play. We'll hang out. Uh, we'll finish up the season for the Mariners, and we'll uh, hopefully, well, you know what? I don't know. Do we want, I mean, if they if they win and Houston wins, Houston wins the division, I think. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens um, tomorrow. But um at least it'll be a good day to get guys like Cal Raleigh a day off. They've probably earned it, so whatever. But have a great night, everybody. Go Mariners. Uh, hopefully see you all tomorrow. We can finish up the season together, mourn together, cry together. And uh, remember to like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow. As always, go Mariners. Thank you again, everybody, for joining me this season. Um, it's meant a lot to me, and I, and I truly do appreciate it. So take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Peace.